much and thank you very much for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. So I, uh, in this uh, presentation, I'm asking this question in Latin. And, uh, Kovadis means where are you going? And uh, since we have, we are short of time, I, I give you the short answer. Uh, this is uh, the evolution of greenhouse of uh, green, uh, CO2 emission uh, by vessel types up to uh, about a year ago. Uh, this is from uh, UNCTAD, and you can see that um, with some uh, few exceptions around coronavirus, there is uh, in general an upward trend. CO2 is going up. Everybody knows about the MEPC 80 about a year ago at uh, the IMO. Uh, and the historic session where uh, they, they developed the, the so-called revised IMO 2023 strategy, where there is the, uh, the new target is net zero by around approximately 2050. Pick uh, greenhouse emissions from international shipping as soon as possible. They have not picked yet. Uh, reach net zero by and around to close to 2050, taking into account different national circumstances. And then the, the, we talked about these intermediate checkpoints by uh, 2030 and 2040. And you had this uh, interesting poll. The previous strategy is the, the initial strategy in 2018, where the target was much more relaxed, uh, achieve uh, reductions of at least 50% uh, by 2050 versus 2008. And there was this intermediate level uh, uh, target uh, reduction of CO2 per transport work by at least 40% by 2030. Uh, the first target was superseded by net zero. The second target is still there. I mean, they have not touched that. Huh? And actually, uh, there is uh, this graph showing the evolution of CII uh, over the last few years. You can see generally a, a downward trend uh, only for container transportation for tankers is about the same, and the very slight, slightly uh, downward trend for bulk carriers and general cargo. And they have been discussing the basket of measures, which, as mentioned before, has a technical element, a green fuel standard, an economic element, maybe a levy. Uh, the situation, uh, uh, as of uh, Two weeks ago, MEPC 81, there is no convergence on the economic element and there is little or some convergence on the technical element. Uh, who is for a levy and who is against a levy? And I try to uh, put it in two groups. For a levy, uh, mainly the Pacific Islands, they say, well, we're going to be underwater in a few years, uh, so you have to do something. Uh, EU 27 is for a levy. Japan and Canada recently, Canada is new. Uh, some shipping associations are for a levy, International Chamber of Shipping, uh, other shipping associations. Against the levy, you see this group of China, India, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Argentina, Russia, Norway, uh, they were for ETS, but as was mentioned before, uh, they, they are now joined, uh, they joined China in their proposal. USA, we don't have Trump, but they are not uh, uh, yet backing an economic measure. So there is no consensus on the, on the economic measure. EU, EU 27 plus the European Commission, they support the fuel standard plus a levy. And this is uh, one of their submissions. And uh, speaking of the EU, uh, you know that, uh, that there was uh, this uh, presentation uh, in the previous session about ETS uh, that uh, Mrs. van der Leyen, one of the first things she said when she took office in 2019, that in the context of the Green Deal and the sustainable mobility pillar, she wants shipping in the EU ETS, which in my opinion, it is the elephant in the room because uh, the IMO is discussing economic measures and here comes the European Commission, the European Union, uh, including shipping in the EU ETS. And it's going to actually, I think it's a paradox that the EU at the IMO has a levy plus fuel standards, and the fuel standards is, is a bit complicated because it has a separate economic element in addition to the levy, but the EU at the EU has ETS, which is a, a different uh, market-based measure based on cap and trade. So they, as you know, they proposed this directive into uh, July to 2021, 
in my opinion, it has some challenges. One is the price uncertainty. You don't know what the price is going to be. And the other is that it's, 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 it's going to be very heavy from an administrative standpoint. We published a paper in March 2022 where we examined the, 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 the risk of carbon leakage for the, in the container sector, lines switching their transshipment hubs just to avoid pain into the UTS. And we examined two, 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 two uh, cases. One is a, a, a company switching from Algeciras to uh, across the strait to Tangier, or switching from Piraeus to Izmir, uh, the transshipment hub, and then we, we concluded that there is a risk of carbon leakage and lost uh, ETS revenue. Uh, the final version of the directive uh, recognized the risk of transshipment and they included this uh, 300 nautical miles exclusion uh, zone. Uh, but what, what does it mean if the ship comes from Singapore uh, the whole trip will count for ETS. The question is, does this plug the loophole? In my opinion, not really. We're going to see this again. And we have protests from port, the port sector, Freeport is the uh, federal, uh, the Federation of Private Port Operators. They protested. Member states protested, but this was not, uh, this was rejected. And uh, there was the discussion about fuel you maritime, the previous section where they want to take this well-to-wake approach. And it's not limited to CO2, it includes all uh, greenhouse gases. In my opinion, this might be another loophole. You have a, a, a report by Lodge Register where you can pull things and avoid the penalty by having one ship as a green ship and the rest of your fleet not being green. The road ahead, we have a long road ahead, it's going to be the comprehensive impact assessment that by 2025, some workshops, MEPC 82 this, later this year, and the basket of measures is, is supposedly going to be agreed by 2025, and the measures will be by 2027. This is a picture from the latest MEPC. They were in festive mood. There was somebody who uh, had a song, but in my opinion, much work remains to be done. Biggest uncertainties, what will be the outcome of the CIA, comprehensive impact assessment? What midterm measures will be selected? How the measures will play out in the EU? And how the EU measures will intersect the IMO? Nobody knows about this. I mean, how will the ETS intersect with CII, for example, of, let alone the market-based measures? So that, uh, since uh, your topic is uncertainty, there, in my opinion, there's a lot of uncertainty. So th thank you very much, and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you.